This video is called The Know Nothings, and we'll be looking at an example of how there was religious discrimination in the United States during the 1800s because of a concept called nativism. So the story begins back in Europe, um, actually well before the United States was a country. When the, United, when the United States was first having its original immigrants coming over before the Revolutionary War, most of these immigrants to the United States were coming from England, since it was an English colony, and most of the people in England were of the Protestant religion. That means kind of most of them were either Puritans or from the Anglican Church of England. In Europe, there were a lot of different competing religious groups, but the main two were Protestants and Catholics. And in Europe, especially between England and Ireland, there was a lot of fighting for a very long time between these two religious groups, uh, Protestants and Catholics. And even today, um, parts of England and Ireland are still fighting about religion. So the United States, throughout most of its history, up until the, the early to mid-1800s, is a predominantly Protestant country. Most everyone um, is of English descent and is of the Protestant faith. But starting in the early 1800s, many, many thousands of people of the Catholic faith start to come to the United States. The reason for this, um, in Ireland there was the potato famine, which caused a lot of hunger and a lot of people were dying in Ireland. There was no food to eat, so people were leaving the country, and many thousands of them came to the United States. Many German Catholics also emigrated to the United States at this time. So you have these Protestants who'd been living in the United States for, you know, their families had been there for generations and they'd sort of become accustomed to being the top dogs. And all of a sudden you have all these new people coming in that were of a different religious group that it just so turns out back in their, back a long time ago, the two religions didn't really get along. So native born United States citizens did not like these new people in their country competing for jobs and, you know, sort of stepping on their turf in a way and old biases, old beliefs about the differences between Catholics and Protestants start to come out in the United States. So the treatment of Catholics was pretty bad. Um, the Protestants did not open, uh, you know, open up to Catholics and let them come in and be nice to them when they, when they moved to the United States. Uh, Protestants and native-born United States citizens would blame these new immigrant groups for outbreaks of disease. They gave the immigrants the least paid and most dangerous jobs. That's why when we studied the Transcontinental Railroad, you saw Irish immigrants and Chinese immigrants working on the uh, dangerous railroad building. Catholic immigrants and other immigrant, immigrant groups were also excluded from the polls. They were not allowed to vote um, through laws. And if a law was impossible to discriminate against Catholics, things like literacy tests, poll taxes, property requirements, all things that immigrants typically didn't have or didn't have the ability to pass at that time due to language restrictions and things like that, um, kept Catholic immigrants from voting. So that was pretty bad. In some cities, it got so bad that Catholic churches were even burned to the ground by violent groups of native, of native United States citizens. Here is a cartoon that I believe really illustrates the problems between Puritan, um, between Protestants and Catholics. You have the Protestants here, native um, Protestant citizens on the beach, and then you have the Catholic immigrants depicted as these like scary monster alligator things. And you see the, the Pope's hat, the papal hat, um, is being made into the teeth of the alligator to sort of symbolize the scary Catholic immigrants and then the, the frightened Protestant native-born citizens on the shores. So a good cartoon to depict the feelings of the time. So that brings us to our main topic, nativism. Nativism is a policy favoring native inhabitants instead of immigrants. So a, native pol a nativism policy would be something that would benefit the people that had been there for a while and discriminate against the people that are just arriving. So Nativist, nativism became a very big thing in the United States, and people started forming nativist clubs. Um, you could think of it sort of in a way like, maybe like the Ku Klux Klan, um, they would, who would discriminate against African Americans. These nativist clubs would discriminate against immigrant groups. Not quite that ex extensive, but something like that. 
Um, these clubs were very secretive. They wouldn't, you know, let anybody in. They had, you know, secret messages and they wouldn't talk about their meetings and stuff like that. They would spread bad rumors and messages and, you know, cause violence against, in some cases, cause violence against immigrant groups. And they would really make immigrant groups look bad. They try to trash them in the newspaper and things like that. When members were asked about the clubs, they would deny ever being in a club. They would say, I know nothing. And that was their, always their go-to line. I know nothing. That's what the club told them to say. So these people that were in these nativist clubs became known as the know-nothings. Soon these clubs grew and began to support candidates for office. And that shared their views. So they were trying to get candidates, people in the government that were also nativists. So when these clubs began to grow, they kind of grew out of the secret club. They, they became known and the secret was out and they developed, they took the, their nickname, they took the name Know Nothings as the name of their political party. So they actually became a major political party in the United States and they supported candidates for office. The platform of the party, they wanted serious restrictions on immigration and immigrant rights and they would only allow native U.S. citizens to vote. So it was a party that was going to benefit native-born United States citizens and really harshly discriminate against immigrants, especially Catholic immigrants. The party got so big that people actually from the Know Nothing Party were elected to Congress. They had a serious presidential candidate and most of their success was in local elections. The governor of Massachusetts was a Know Nothing at one point and many mayors of, of cities were also Know Nothings. So they, you know, they were, there were lots of Know Nothings elected to local office throughout the mostly the North and the East Coast. The party only lasted for a couple of years. It was a short-lived run for the Know Nothings. By 1858, only two or three years after they formed as a real party, the party was blown apart basically by the issue of slavery. Um, they couldn't decide if they were pro-slavery or anti-slavery, so they went away. Um, although the party was no more, I think the fact that there was a party that was this extreme about anti-immigrant rights really shows you that there were quite a few anti-Catholic views in the United States. And they continued to pop up throughout the 1800s and even into the 1900s. Um, it might be surprising to you, but even by 1960, many people did not vote for President Kennedy because he was Catholic. He became the first Catholic president, but some questioned um, that about him during his election. So throughout the 1800s and 1900s, there still was this anti-Catholic sentiment in the United States. So to conclude, during the 1800s, you're going to see many Catholic immigrants coming to the U.S. from Europe for various reasons, uh, mostly Irish and German. These new Catholic immigrants face discrimination like not being hired for jobs, um, having to do bad jobs, not being allowed to vote, and other things. There were also nativist clubs, nativists um, wanting to benefit the native-born people, that began to form, and it turned into a major political party called the Know Nothings. And the Know Nothing Party was only around for a couple years, but um, the anti-Catholic, anti-immigrant views remained in the United States. And throughout our history, we've had various times where there have, we've been very accepting of immigrants. Um, and there's been other times, like during the 1850s, where um, the United States has been not accepting of immigrants at all. So some of these views still do exist today.